Hello everyone, today we're going to be creating a 2024 election map based on the party registration of the nearly 14 million votes already cast nationwide. NBC News has a great tool tracking mail voting and early in-person voting across almost every state. As of this recording, 47% of these ballots were cast by registered Democrats, 36% by registered Republicans, and 17% by independents or third-party voters. Now, it's not surprising that Democrats have an early edge. Traditionally, they vote by mail and early in person at higher rates, while Republicans tend to show up more on Election Day itself. So, instead of just taking these raw numbers at face value, we'll dive deeper into additional factors like polling data, demographic trends, and prediction markets to give us a more accurate projection of how things could shape up. Let's get started. The states already filled in on this map are those where NBC News does not have early voting data available. These include the solidly Democratic Pacific states of Washington and Hawaii, which combine for 16 electoral votes for Kamala Harris. On the Republican side, we have the solid southern states of Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, and Kentucky, which together contribute 56 electoral votes. We really don't even need to see any early vote data out of these states, as they are all effectively certain to vote strongly this way. And now for the sake of your time, I'm not going to go in-depth into the other solid states for either candidate, and rather I'll just take you through a brief overview. Starting with former President Trump, the early vote data suggests Republicans should dominate in each of the following states, as expected. Idaho shows a strong R plus 31 margin, Utah is R plus 27, Montana R plus 21, Wyoming a massive R plus 61, North Dakota R plus 30, and South Dakota R plus 36. Kansas is R plus 16, Oklahoma R plus 13, Indiana R plus 16, and Tennessee R plus 33. Each of these states voted for Trump by significant margins in 2020 and haven't gone blue since at least 2008. Adding these to the map, Trump's electoral vote total climbs to 114. Remember, 270 is the magic number needed to secure the White House. For those familiar with the map this cycle, you may have noticed that Nebraska and West Virginia have been left blank for now. Both states typically lean solidly Republican for Trump, but the current data shows Nebraska is only R plus 1, with 42% Republican ballots cast compared to 41% Democrat. However, looking deeper, the remaining ballots requested in Nebraska lean much more strongly Republican at 47% to 35%. As usual, Democrats are likely overrepresented in early voting, with a shift expected as we get closer to Election Day. Nebraska's early Democratic strength is also likely tied to its second district, which is blue-leaning and trending further left. This district, which Biden won by 6.5 points in 2020, is urban with a large share of college graduates, demographics that tend to vote early. So for the map, I'll categorize Nebraska's statewide race as likely Republican, while the deeply red 1st and 3rd districts remain solid Republican. The 2nd district, however, will lean blue. As for West Virginia, this was Trump's second strongest state in the country in 2020. Yet 45% of the early vote has been cast by Democrats, compared to 37% for Republicans. However, the total number of early votes, 9,475, is tiny, and even the outstanding requested ballots, which lean Democratic, only amount to around 17,000 votes. With a registered voter population of about 1.25 million in West Virginia, these early votes represent just about 2% of the electorate. The fact that Trump carried West Virginia by 39 percentage points back in 2020 is a much stronger data point, and so this this small early voting sample doesn't change the overall outlook. West Virginia remains solid Republican on the map. Now as for Kamala Harris, Democrats hold strong early leads in several deep blue states. In Oregon, Democrats have a massive D-plus 47 advantage, and in Harris's home state of California, the margin is D-plus 18. Every registered voter in California receives a mail-in ballot, and over a million have already been returned, showing 49% Democrat and 31% Republican. Shifting back to the overall picture, the lone deep blue state not on the coast is Illinois, which is currently 
nearly D plus 15. In the Democrat dominant Northeast, New York is D plus 30, New Jersey D plus 42, Maryland D plus 49, Delaware D plus 38, Connecticut D plus 26, Massachusetts D plus 28, Vermont D plus 46, and Rhode Island D plus 27. Joe Biden carried all these states by at least 15 points in 2020, and none have voted Republican since 1988, solidifying their position as safe Democratic strongholds. Together, they lift Kamala Harris ahead of Trump now with 181 electoral votes. That leaves 18 more competitive states that we'll now take a deeper look at. Let's start with Alaska, where approximately 6,000 ballots have been returned so far. Republicans lead by four points, with 29% of ballots cast by Republicans compared to 25% by Democrats, and a significant 46% from independents or non-affiliated voters. Alaska has the highest share of independent voters in the country, and while it's unclear how these ballots will break, history suggests Trump has an edge. No Democrat has won Alaska since 1964, but Trump's 10-point margin in 2020 was the narrowest for a Republican since 1968. With that in mind, we'll place Alaska in the likely Republican category. Next, we move to Nevada, where more than 100,000 ballots have already been returned. Democrats currently lead Republicans by 5 points, 40% to 35%. In the 2020 election, when Biden carried Nevada by 2.4%, the early vote was similarly split, with Democrats leading 39% to 35%. With Democrats outperforming their 2020 margin by one point, it suggests they are on track to potentially increase their margin. However, current polling has Trump leading Harris by 0.8%, based on an average of the last seven polls. Given these conflicting data points, we'll place Nevada in the tilt blue category for Harris, which suggests Harris will win it by less than two points. For your reference, margins between two to six points are lean, six to ten likely, and greater than ten safe. Let's go to Arizona now. A similarly competitive race here in the Southwest, Arizona was notably the second closest state in 2020 by margin as Biden carried it by 0.3%. Now the early vote numbers here suggest Republicans are on track for a really strong showing as they lead Democrats by 7 points among the 360,000 mail-in and early in-person votes cast. 43% to 36% is the share here. If we compare this to the 2020 election in Arizona, out of the 2.8 million ballots returned ahead of the election, Republicans only outnumbered Democrats by 3 points at 38% to 35%, so Republicans are currently overperforming 2020 by 4 points, which would of course be significant considering any slippage for the Democrats may prove consequential as they only won by the narrowest of margins, again 0.3%. The polling here also suggests Trump is on track to carry Nevada with a lead at 1.6% over the last seven surveys. We'll go ahead and place Arizona in the tilt Republican category here on our map. Next are Colorado and New Mexico. 2020 notably marked the first time in over 50 years that Colorado voted to the left of New Mexico as it trended hard to the left to favor Joe Biden by almost 14 points, whereas he only carried New Mexico by 11%. Yet in terms of the early vote here so far, Democrats outnumber Republicans by 15 points in New Mexico right now, and by a narrower 5 points in Colorado. I should note here that historically, Colorado's independents are strongly left-leaning. Back in 2020, the early vote suggested Democrats only had a two-point advantage over Republicans with 40% of those ballots returned by independents, yet again Biden won by 13.5%. So going back to our electoral map now, I'm going to place both states in the safe blue column, as Democrats are on track to match their 2020 margins. Wrapping up the Southwest with Texas, the second largest prize on the map, worth 40 electoral votes. So far, 133,000 ballots have been returned and Democrats currently lead Republicans by 7 points, with 50% to 43%, 
It's important to note that early voting doesn't officially start until today, so these numbers are just a small sample, mainly from mail-in ballots, and we'll get a much clearer picture as early voting continues over the next few days. In the 2020 election, when Trump carried Texas by 5.6%, the narrowest Republican margin in the state this century, the early and absentee vote favored Republicans by 17 points, 53% to 36%, with over 9.5 million ballots. Ballots cast. So far, the early returns represent less than 1% of the expected total, and the data is heavily skewed toward mail-in voters who tend to lean more Democratic. Given current polling, which shows Trump leading Harris by 5.7% based on a six-poll average and factoring in the 2020 margin, Texas remains in the lean Republican column on our map. Now would be a great time to subscribe to my channel below so you can stay tuned as I'll be doing more updates with new early vote numbers as they come in. Shifting over to the southeast in Florida, more than a million ballots have already been returned, with Democrats holding a five-point lead in voter registration data, 42% to 37%. At face value, this is a positive sign for Kamala Harris, as in 2020, when Trump carried Florida by 3.5 points, Democrats only led the early vote tally by one percentage point, out of more than 9 million ballots. However, like Texas, early voting hasn't started yet, it begins on October October 26th. Once early voting kicks in, Republicans are likely to catch up and potentially surpass Democrats, especially given the state's recent trend to the right. Since 2020, Republicans have registered far more voters, and Florida has become one of the states trending hardest to the right. Considering this, there's no reason to place Florida anywhere but in the lean Republican column, especially as Trump leads by nearly 8 percentage points in the latest Real Clear Politics polling average. There's a strong chance this rating could be upgraded to likely Republican once those early votes start coming in. Next up is Georgia, one of the core battlegrounds in this election cycle. Back in 2020, it was the closest state, favoring Joe Biden by just two-tenths of a percent, similar to Arizona. Now, the latest polling average suggests that Trump is slightly favored, leading by 1.8% according to the eight surveys included in the Real Clear Politics average. In terms of early voting, Georgia is seeing a record number of ballots cast already. So far, nearly 1.5 million ballots have been cast early or by mail, with Republicans leading by three points at 49% to 46%. Interestingly, this is a relatively strong sign for Democrats, as in the 2020 election, Republicans outnumbered Democrats by eight points among the four million early votes. This suggests Republicans are currently underperforming, although Democratic numbers are likely inflated due to the overrepresentation of mail in ballots which tend to lean blue. For now, we'll keep Georgia in the tilt Republican category on our map as we continue to monitor more numbers. In North Carolina now, another state that tends to cast a lot of ballots early and by mail. So far, Democrats have a slight edge, leading by one point, 35% to 34%, among nearly a million votes cast. With early voting having been open for four days, these numbers offer a solid sample, though they've been tempered by complications related to RFK Jr.'s candidacy and the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, which has left some early voting sites closed. North Carolina is a state where Democrats need to build a solid early voting lead, as rural Republican-dominated areas will likely swing hard for Trump on Election Day. In 2020, Trump won the state by about one and a half points, despite Democrats leading early voting by five points among roughly 4.5 million ballots. So while turnout is strong, Democrats are currently underperforming compared to 2020, with Trump also leading the polls by half a percentage point based on eight surveys, will keep North Carolina in the tilt Republican category for now. We have nine states to go now, with former President Trump leading in the race to 270 electoral votes with 238 over Kamala Harris's 202. Let's go to the Midwest now starting in Harris's running mate Tim Walz's home state of Minnesota. Joe Biden carried Minnesota by seven percentage points in 2020, as Democrats led in the early returns by 13. Today, with more than 500,000 votes cast thus far, Democrats outnumber Republicans by a massive 37 points. Again, this is oversampled as most of these ballots were cast by mail, which is the most Democrat-friendly vote type. 
On our electoral map, we'll place Minnesota comfortably in the likely category for Harris and Walls. Now turning to Iowa and Ohio, these are two of the fastest right-trending states in the country. Both voted for Barack Obama in 2008 and 2012, but Donald Trump won them by at least eight points in both 2016 and 2020. As of today, Democrats outnumber Republicans by three points in Iowa with 57,000 ballots returned, while in Ohio, Republicans lead Democrats by six points with nearly 800,000 ballots cast. These early numbers, however, aren't too predictive. In 2020, Trump won Iowa by 8 points, even though Democrats outnumbered Republicans in early voting by 12 points. Similarly, in Ohio, Trump's 8-point win came despite Republicans only leading early votes by 10 points. Given the incomplete and mixed data, we'll place both Iowa and Ohio in the likely Republican category on our map, based on their 2020 margins. Now let's focus on the core Upper Rust Belt trio, the Wimpa states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, which will likely play a decisive role in this race. These states have voted together in every election since 1988, backing Democrats until they narrowly flipped to Trump in 2016 by less than a point, giving him the necessary votes to reach 270 electoral votes. However, they all flipped back to Biden in 2020, securing his path to the presidency. For the 2024 election, both candidates' paths to 270 likely hinge on winning at least one of these states. For Kamala Harris, she might need all three. Even if Trump were to sweep the four Sun Belt battlegrounds, Harris could still reach 270 electoral votes with a clean sweep of the Rust Belt states. Starting in Wisconsin, it is generally viewed as the most Republican-leaning of the trio demographically and fundamentally. It voted to the right of both Michigan and Pennsylvania in 2016 and 2020. Being whiter and more rural, any overperformance by Trump among the white working class would likely be most pronounced here. Currently, early vote data shows Democrats holding an expected strong advantage, with 40% of mail-in votes cast compared to Republicans 19%, a total of 322,000 ballots so far. Early voting won't start until tomorrow, so there's no point in comparing these numbers to 2020 just yet. Instead, we'll follow other data points here. The polling average between Trump and Harris has Trump up by 0.2% based on the last eight polls, and prediction markets on Bet Online favor Republicans at minus 130. This may be due to the fact that Wisconsin had the two largest polling underestimations of Trump in both 2016 and 2020. The public consensus seems to factor that in, giving Trump the benefit of the doubt in a close race. I tend to agree. For those who've been following the channel, I've remained skeptical of Harris's chances in Wisconsin, even when she was leading by several points earlier in the cycle. So for now, I'm placing Wisconsin in the tilt Republican category on our map. Different story in Michigan, where I've generally been more optimistic for Harris than the general public. Michigan is fundamentally the bluest of the three WIMPA states, having backed Biden by nearly three points in 2020, and Democrats have performed strongly in down-ballot races since then. While the latest polling average shows Trump up by more than a point for the first time since Harris became the nominee, the early vote data looks solid for Democrats. Over a million ballots have already been returned, and Democrats hold an 18-point advantage, 54% to 36%. In 2020, when Biden won Michigan by 2.8%, it was Republicans who outnumbered Democrats by two points among the 3.2 million early or mail-in votes. So with that in mind, I'm going to place Michigan down as tilting Democrat for Harris here right now. I think if we do see these three states split, the most likely to diverge are Wisconsin and Michigan, whereas Pennsylvania will vote somewhere in between. Speaking of Pennsylvania, it's the most essential battleground on the map, worth 19 electoral votes. The polling average currently shows Trump leading by 0.8%, based on 10 polls, all within the margin of error. This means a normal polling error could easily swing the race 
race to Harris. Pennsylvania is as purple as it gets, a true 50-50 battleground. In terms of early voting, nearly 800,000 ballots have already been returned. Pennsylvania doesn't have traditional early voting. Voters must request a mail-in ballot in person at the county clerk's office. These ballots are expected to lean heavily Democratic, and the data reflects that 64% are from registered Democrats, compared to 27% from Republicans. So these early numbers won't truly provide us with an accurate clue as to the overall race trajectory. Given this, I'm relying on the polling average and my own priors, which currently show Trump as a very slight favorite in Pennsylvania at this moment. That leaves us with the more Democratic-leaning secondary battlegrounds of Virginia, New Hampshire, and Maine. Starting in Virginia, where 13 electoral votes, over a million ballots have already been returned, and Democrats hold a 15-point advantage at 53% to 38%. Virginia voted for Biden by 10 points in 2020, the largest Democratic margin since FDR in 1944. With early voting making up more than half of the total votes in 2020 and leaning Democratic by 8 points, Democrats are on a strong track here, even accounting for the early inflation of mail-in ballots. I'll place Virginia in the likely blue column for Harris. Next, up in New England with New Hampshire and Maine, both states were close in 2016, with Hillary Clinton winning by less than 3 points, but they swung hard to Biden in 2020, by 7 points in New Hampshire and 9 points in Maine. The early vote currently favors Democrats by 8 points in New Hampshire and by 20 points in Maine. On our map, I'll place both states in the likely blue column for Harris. Maine, like Nebraska, splits its electoral votes. The first district is solid blue, while the second district voted for Trump by more than 7 points in both 2016 and 2020. So based on an analysis of the early vote so far, Donald Trump is on track to win the election with 291 electoral votes to Kamala Harris's 247. This sets up an extremely close contest with narrow margins in key battleground states. Make sure to subscribe to my channel below for more updates as we get closer to election day. That does it for today's video though, shout out to my channel members in the description below, please leave a like on the video down below if you enjoyed it. You can check out more content from my channel here, and as always, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, EP out.